Fundamental problem F2-5 says the force F equals 450 pounds acts on the frame. Resolve this force into components acting along members AB and AC and determine the magnitude of each component. All right, so as you can see in the diagram, here is the 450 pound force that's vertically downward at point A. And then we have a pair of angles, 45 degrees and 30 degrees. And then here on top we have member AC and at the bottom we have member AB and now closely looking at this member here we pretty much want to project this 450 pound force along member AB by drawing a force vector FAB which I predict going in this direction and then of course we can also resolve this force into member AC which I'll draw in this direction, that way we can form a triangle using these forces by simply bringing down that force AC, just like so. And notice that here, the 450 pound force is basically the resultant of forces AB and AC. And now let's go ahead and redraw this triangle to make it more clear over here. Starting off with point A. Here we have the 450 pound force going downwards. And again, remember that 450 pounds is simply the magnitude of this force, which is the same as the length of the vector. And now of course here to the left, we have the force AB. And then at the bottom, we have the force AC. And now as shown in the original diagram, the force AB is at an angle of 45 degrees from the 450 pound force. And now for force AC, we're given a 30 degree angle, which is projected from member AB. And now as you can see in the section between member AC and AB, we have a pair of vertical angles. So that inner angle there will also be 30 degrees. However, we do want to find the angle that's between member AB and the force AC, which we have moved downwards in our triangle. So to obtain this angle, you may have noticed that there's an alternate angle between the new 30 degrees that we defined onto our sketch and the angle between member AB and force AC. But also we can simply observe how member AC and AB cross at an angle of 30 degrees and so that 30 degrees just simply carries over after moving down force AC. So in our triangle we have two known angles 45 degrees and 30 degrees and so since we have two angles in our triangle we can find the third angle which I'll call alpha. Of course by simply subtracting the sum of the two angles from 180 degrees. So alpha is equal to 180 degrees minus 30 plus 45 degrees, which are 75 degrees. So simply 180 minus 75, we get 105 degrees. So the angle alpha is 105 degrees. And that completes our triangle. So now we can go ahead and solve for the forces we can start off by finding force AB. And again, remember that this FAB is simply the magnitude of this force, which is the same as the length of the force vector. And so since it's equivalent to the length of the force vector, that length is basically the length of this side of the triangle. And so here our only known force is 450 pounds. And so we can basically say that we know the length of one side of this triangle while we have three angles. So based on your trigonometry knowledge, what rule could we use to find the other remaining sides of the triangle? Well, of course, we can simply apply the law of sines. Again, since we know all three angles and one side of the triangle, and remember, the law of sines is simply lowercase a over sine capital A is equal to lowercase b over sine capital B, where the lowercase letters are the lengths of the sides, and the uppercase letters are, of course, the corresponding angles. 
So here we can go ahead and substitute in force AB for A, which is divided by the sine of its corresponding angle, which is the angle across from force AB, which is, of course, 105 degrees. And that is equal to, for B, we'll use our known force, which is 450 pounds, divided by sine of its corresponding angle, which is 30 degrees. And so that completes this equation, which you can see now simply allows us to solve for force AB. Of course, by simply multiplying sine of 105 to the right side to isolate FAB. So we'll have FAB is equal to multiplying and dividing the right side. We are left with roughly 869.33. So our force AB is equal to 869.33 pounds. So now we are left with the force on member AC, which is of course FAC. And now here we can basically follow the same process we use to find FAB using the law of sines, except of course solving for FAC. So using the law of sines, we have FAC over sine of its corresponding angle, which is 45 degrees, is equal to 450 pounds over sine of 30 degrees. And again, we just simply solve for FAC by multiplying sine of 45 to the right side, which will give us force AC is equal to roughly 636.4 pounds. And now for an optional step, you can double check the math here by, for example, solving for FAC using the force AB, which we found previously, instead of the 450 pounds, and see if you do get that same 636 pound force. And so solving for FAC here by multiplying sine of 45 to the right side, we do get the 636.4 pounds. And so this is a neat way to just double check the math here and see how the forces pretty much are related to each other. And hopefully you can see that this problem pretty much mainly requires knowledge of geometry and trigonometry, as well as knowing how to pretty much move and shape the force vectors in order to form a triangle that correctly relates the applied force to its components which we can use to simply find the magnitude of the forces by knowing that magnitude is simply equal to the side lengths of the triangle.